Romans chapter 5 right quick this morning, and um, we'll look at one verse of Scripture, and I'll uh, attempt to bring the message I felt like the Lord has laid on my heart. Romans chapter 5 and verse number 21, the last verse, that as sin hath reigned unto death. Reign would mean uh, the, the boss, be in control of, uh, command. Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. The first part of that verse said, as before you're saved, all the way through history, sin reigned unto death. I want to preach this morning on the subject, the destructive power of sin. The destructive power of sin. I'd ask you to listen to me. I'd strongly urge you and advise you to listen to what I'm getting ready to say. The intellectual world this morning tries to deny the existence of sin. They think born a certain way or a certain place and your surroundings determine how you turn out and you're born neutral or good. Psychology and psychiatry don't understand human nature because they don't factor in sin. They say, well, a person, have you noticed now everything that person does wrong? They're trying to go back and say, well, it's genetic, and they find a, 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 a gene for it, and he was born an alcohol, to be an alcoholic, and stuff like that. And that's because they don't understand that we're flawed, people. There's something wrong with us. If you hadn't noticed, the whole human race is flawed by sin. A secular education from college does not factor in sin. That's why you've got to be extremely careful about your kids going to college. Now, when I say something like that, people about have a heart attack, but it's true. It's true. You make an infidel out of them. And, and uh, I had a man tell me the other day, a Christian man, right, kid, church her whole life. She's 19 in college now and questioning everything she's ever been taught. I'm not saying it's wrong every time, but I'm saying you better be careful. This tornado that was in Tennessee the other day, I, I seen, I, I, didn't, I hadn't been following it really, but I saw just a little, every, I turned the news on just for a minute. I do that once in a while to see if the world blowed up. And uh, if the world blows up, you'll find out about it soon enough. You don't have to sit there all day long and listen to everything they say. But I, I turned it on just checking, I saw absolute devastation out there in Tennessee, on you know, Nashville. I'm telling you, they, I mean, they showed one, one section out there, and it, it looked like bombs had, had blowed up them houses, just sticks, piles of stick, and cars sitting up on top of piles of, of stuff like that. And I, my cousin, actually, my cousin who lives in Nashville, the one that he's a, writes country music and sings country music, Rick, um, his, my, his uh, daughter or step-granddaughter somebody, was uh, in one of those neighborhoods that was affected by that. And you know when I seen that, and they, they was on the news, and just yesterday, I think yesterday they said that the Tennessee police had just uncovered what they believe was a body of that little girl, Evelyn, 15 months old. And they think they found her remains. Nearly 30 people, at least I heard, or as close to 30, had lost their lives in that. And you know when I saw that, I saw all them sticks piled up, and I saw cars turned upside down and glass, busted glass everywhere. I thought, what that tornado has done to them houses, sin has done to them communities. Well, everything you can see is a picture of something you can't see. What we see there is a picture of what's going on spiritually in those communities and ours too. So I want to talk about how sin is destructive. We've lived to see the day when sin is, is promoted, actually glamorized, celebrated. 
in the generation that we live in. Somebody comes out some gross, unbelievable, ungodly some, and the world applauds them for being so brave and, and coming out. Uh, you know, and, and that type of thing, where we've, we've, we've got it, twi- that's like clapping, there's a tornado coming, you know, and it's going to blow all the houses and t- kill everybody. Wonderful, isn't it wonderful that we've, uh, that, that tornado has freedom to do, yeah, you'll think it, uh, by the time it takes you away. I'm going to talk about uh, the first, the characteristics of sin. The Bible said in Proverbs 14:30 uh, that sin is a reproach to any people. Any group, any family, any individual, any church, any nation, sin is a reproach. Sin is deceitful. It never gives what it promises. Actually, sin don't really give you anything. It'll take from you. It promises a lot, but never gives. Sin is like a man sitting on a creek bank fishing. And he's sitting here and he's got his hook cast into the water. And he don't paint that hook bright fluorescent or pink like that thing and say, all right, come here, you stupid fish, and get on here and I'm going to pull you out and put you in the frying pan. He don't do that. He high, That hook, that line's invisible it can't, so the fish can't see it. He puts a nice piece of bait on that, whatever kind of fish he's fishing for, a, 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 a bug or a worm or a spider or, or a crawfish or something and puts it on there. And those fish swimming by look over there and say, yeah, my lucky day, look at that. And come toward that. And that fish, the whole time he's coming toward it, he thinks, I'm in, I've really hit the jackpot here. He does not see the hook. He does not see the line. He does not see the guy up there getting ready to jerk him in the frying pan. All he sees is that nice bait. And boy, when he swallows it, uh. Uh, right in here, boy, and it pull, he pulls him out into the frying pan. He goes. That is a perfect picture of sin. You know what the devil does, kids? You know what the devil does? He puts that bait in front of you. He puts that that boy, that girl, that that drug, that alcohol, that something. He puts it out there in front of you. Puts it out there in front of you, and you think, man, that looks good. Man, that looks like fun. You don't see the hook. You don't see the line. You think you're smarter than and seven billion other people that's done the same thing. You think you've got it. You think you've got it all figured out. You think, not me. I don't know why you think you're smarter than every other billion of people that's been on this earth. But I'm telling you, sin is deceitful. It, it starts out, uh, when they, they say, I've, I've, I've never done drugs, but I've always heard people say, you know what? He gave me the first, the first hit or the first... Uh, shot or the first peel or the or the first uh, joint. He gave it to me. Of course he did. Uh, you take a few, they don't give them to you. Uh, then, brother, if they don't give you nothing. You begin to pay. Alcohol is sweet and cool and refreshing to begin with. You ever notice they put a sign on the on the on the billboard? There's a nice looking handsome man. He's got his arm around a pretty girl. He's driving a fancy sports car. He has a, a beer in his hand and the impression Impression is, if you drink that, you get a pretty girl and a sports car. Let's turn that picture around the other way. And he's sitting there like that, and half his teeth gone, his neck's red, and his his eyes are bloodshot, and his girl's gone, his car's gone, and, and everything. That that's what sin really, really will do to you. It's just like a fire. Uh, you set this building on fire, it will destroy it. That's what sin will do, like a bomb going off. When you get sin in your life, it's like a bomb. Boom! It destroys things. Uh, it, it, turns, it turns everything upside down. Uh, you, there's case after case after case after case in the Bible. Have you ever wondered why God put all those stories in the Bible? It was to show you, among other things, that you, if you do wrong, it's going to blow everything up. How many times have I heard people come in that door and say, Brother Danny, everything just blowed up last night. Everything just blew up. That's the destructive power of sin, ladies and gentlemen. It's like a bomb. But let me say secondly this morning, um, I, I want us to think about what sin will do, what sin will do to families. Sin will blow your family to pieces. 
it will absolutely blow it to pieces. We can tell. We all know stories. We all know stories of people who had a had a had a family, had, had a, um, a husband, had a wife, had kids, had a job, had a car, had a had a, a, a nice home to live in, and sin got into that. Month. We had people right here in our church that you would never believe it would happen to, but let a little sin get in their heart. And I'm gonna tell you something, people. The devil don't play fair. He gets you a little sin in there. You, you may think, I got this. I got that. I can handle this. I got this. But that little thing starts growing and growing and growing. I'm going to tell you where you're headed. You're headed to a point where it's out of control. And you can't control it no more. It controls you. You play with it and play with it and play with it and play with it. I heard about this guy. He said uh, he worked for the circus or somebody. And, you had, to, and he had these, uh, like these, terribly dangerous boa constrictors and everything. And he'd wrap them around his arm and he'd mess with them and do a show and everybody just stand there and just cringe. Watch and I said, oh my goodness, I don't see how in the world. You said, and, that, and it's poisonous. That, that's the real thing. And they said, sure enough, sure enough, one day that thing went and got him right there in the neck. That's a picture of how sin will do to you. Look what it done to the first family, Adam and Eve. They're in the Garden of Eden. They had it made. They had it made. And, and the devil come and, you know, he offered Eve the fruit and she took her the fruit and gave her a husband and he did eat. Think about that, people. That's, that's true stuff. That really happened. Uh, I, I know we get made fun of for that. People say, oh, you crazy people. You, you believe that everybody in the world came from Adam and Eve. Yeah, yeah, we do. That's a lot smarter than believing they all come from a rock. Uh, that's what they teach in college. Uh, they, they won't say that, but that's what they believe. They come from primordial soup, uh, and they don't know where the soup come from, uh, or the rock. Uh, and uh, they, Adam and Eve really ate the fruit. They really, he really gave to her, he, she gave to him. He did eat, and the devil come, and he said, Look, Eve, you'd be a whole lot better off if you would eat this. Now, I don't know about that. Adam, Adam, Adam said, Don't eat that. And she said, uh, that's as feminine as I can sound, and you ought to thank God for it. <laughs> Something wrong with a feminine talking preacher, ain't that right? Uh, but anyway, and they are a lot of them. Uh, but anyway, uh, she said, we can't eat that. He said, ah, oh, come on, sister. He said, sister, you know what you need to do? You need to be woke. That's what everybody says nowadays. He's woke. Have you heard that? Everybody, yeah, they say, oh, the, the woke generation. Let me tell you what woke means. Woke means the devil has thrown so much mud in your eyes, you can't see, you're blind as a bat coming in backwards. That's what that means. You are so out of touch, you can't find God, you couldn't find the truth, and it slapped you in the face. That's what woke means. He, he wasn't better off after she's woke. Uh, the world says woke means you're open to all the different, uh, you know, genders and all the different bunch of bull like that. Uh, but the devil, look what sin did to her. It cost Adam and Eve the Garden of Eden. It cost them their home. They had to leave there. Cain and Abel, Cain killed Abel. She stood over the grave of her son, Abel, there and bawled and cried. And her and Adam hugged and, and said, oh, look what's happened to our son. And it all started back there when they sinned in the Garden of Eden. Let me tell you something about sin, people. It'll follow you. It'll follow you on down through the years and, and come out and your kids and your grandkids and your great-grandkids. And that's why we have destructive power of sin in this world. It's heartbreaking. It's absolutely heartbreaking. The situation we saw yesterday, visiting, uh, me and Brother Mike, uh, we was visiting yesterday, door to door, just like I preached. And we were going door to door, just one, you know, the results of sin in every single home. I'm telling you, unbelievable. It wasn't so close to town right here. I can tell you stories that we just saw yesterday uh, on visitation. I saw, uh, I knew a, a young lady, she had actually come and, and went, went to camp with us. She was from another state. Uh, this girl grew up um, in another state, and she come up, and her daddy lived way out west somewhere, and her mom was on drugs, and so she didn't get to, didn't see the one of them, and was raised by two older sisters. When she was about 13 or 14, obviously, the older sister she said she never did feel wanted and told someone here in our church 
that the only reason that other sister even kept her was to get a check every month. She said, they, she don't care about me. Well, the older sister had a baby, and when that happened, the, the young, this girl that I'm telling you about really got messed up because she felt oh, nobody wants me, nobody cares about me. We got a whole generation of young people that really believe nobody cares. And you can't blame them. We get, we get calls, from, uh, we're foster parents. We get calls from the DSS on a regular basis. Can you take this kid? Can you take that kid? Can you take this kid? I mean, all the time. And these kids feel like nobody wants them. Same old story. Mama's on drugs, dad's in jail. Mama's on drugs, dad's in jail. Well, her, her daddy was out west somewhere, and her, the mama was on drugs, so she grew up with her two older sisters. She learned to party. She learned to dance. She learned to drink. And she actually came and went with us to camp one summer. And uh, they said at one of those services, got right with the Lord. I hope and pray she did. At that time, she was about 14. She finally felt like nobody cared about her, got all messed up in sin, went back to that environment, uh, got all in all kinds of trouble and, told, and run away and hitchhiked out west to try to find the place where her daddy was. A 14-year-old. And stayed out there for a while. Nobody heard from her. And it wasn't long after that till they got a phone call. One of her sisters got a phone call from the police department. And the police department called and said, uh, are you so-and-so, so-and-so? Uh, we have your sister here. I've got some bad news. Uh, she was involved with a bunch of guys. They were messing with drugs, selling them here, meeting here. So they said somebody took a gun and shot her in the head and killed her. She was 15 years old. Did you hear me? I said, 15 years old. Do you know what caused all that? The sin, destructive power of sin. Destroyed that home. Why do you think God set it up? A husband, a wife, and children. That's God's order for people to live and honor God and serve God. The most protection a child can possibly have is a saved mama and a saved daddy and a good Bible preaching church and a Christian education and an environment where God is exalted and honored. I'm telling you people this morning, sin's destructive. It'll ruin, and if you think it won't happen to you, you better take another look. You better pray a protection a prayer, a wall of prayer around your children because sin will destroy your family. Destroy it. Right up here between here and Nebo, every, years ago, somebody called cops one night, said uh, they found a baby. And somebody took a baby and put it in a bag and just threw it out on the side of the road. It was in the weeds. They heard it crying. They went out there and got it. You know what caused that? Think of the thousands of little kids crying theirself to sleep every night. Now, Mama, where's Daddy? Mama, where's Daddy? I don't know, honey. I don't know. But Mama, where's Daddy? Daddy comes in, slams the door, cussing. And they said, go in your room. Slam the door. And they can hear mom and daddy cussing and screaming and throwing things. And little kids that got that. Oh, yeah, that happened right here in this town last night. And in the town where you live. And all over this country. And all over this world. Little kids. Daddy, where's mama? I don't know, honey. Daddy, where's mama? Why don't mama come get us? Daddy, why don't mama live here no more? Daddy, why, why's... Daddy, why this? Daddy, why this? And kids are slapped. Kids are smacked. Kids are kicked. Kids, but you've heard me tell that, that illustration before where the, there was, a, there was a, a, a guy and why, a woman, I don't think he was married, had a little kid about four years old, and that kid would cry and cry and cry, and instead of tending to it, instead of taking care of it, they just throw it in the room, slam the door so they wouldn't have to listen to it, so they could get drunk and get high. And, they, and that kid, and they, went to, and they went to Florida, this is years ago, they got one of them old, cheap, sorry, run-down, low-down motel rooms to party at night. They got in there that night, they said that little baby started crying, they said the kids started screaming and crying, they said, shut up! Kept crying, kept screaming, and they finally took it and opened the closet door and throwed him in that closet and said, now you stay in there, you can hush, and slammed the door. They got drunk, passed out. Next morning, she said, I wonder why he ain't crying. 
she opened that closet door and there laid their little baby. Boy, kid dead and a, a big old rattlesnake quiet all around. It had been bit so many times. They thought it was crying wanting out. That's what sin will do your home. Listen, y'all. That's what sin will do to your home. Don't believe the devil's lies. He said, oh, preacher, everybody's party. No, they're not. No, they're not. God still has some people that want to do right. God still has some people that don't drink and don't cuss and don't party and don't dance and don't fornicate and don't swap wives. and don't. God still has some people that do the right thing. For heaven's sake, listen to what I'm saying this morning. Sin is destructive. It'll destroy you. It'll destroy you. You fooling around doing something you know ain't right. It'll destroy you. Look what sin's done to churches. I know. Churches, they, many, many hundreds of them closing their doors. I was up in Michigan preaching years ago, and the preacher was taking me here and there, and we was going to eat or something, visiting or something. He said, Brother Castle, that's what he called me. He said, see that place right there? And it was a nice big structure with a sign out front. It's a bar. I said, yep. He said, that used to be a church. And, and I looked at it, and I could tell it was sort of shaped like a church building, and it was such and such bar. And at that time, man, that shocked me. I said, oh, my goodness. He said, that's right. That used to be a place of worship. People come in there and worship God. That's what sin will do to a church. I know of another one that at one time was a great church that taught the Bible. And young men trained about They had a big fight. Sin got in, busted it all up, and, and, and they still go. But it never has been right since. I know of another one. It used to be so packed full of people, people would literally stand around the walls when they'd have revival and shout and cry and run the aisle and people get saved. That church don't even exist. Out of business. Sold the building, shut her down. That's what sin will do to a church. That's why we have prayer meetings. That's why we have a, a, a prayer meeting on Wednesday night and come and pray. Listen, people. I need to say, well, man, I like to go to the cool church. They don't have but one church. We don't need to be going to church less. For heaven's sake, we need to be going more than we ever have before. That's what the Bible said. Even so much, the more as you see the day approaching. God help us, people. We don't need to back off. We need more. I know of another one in another state. Used to stand for be a great soul winning bus ministry training ground and now some kind of contemporary mess that don't even run buses or have much soul winning. Another one that was a great soul winning church tore all to pieces. Another one that used to stand for the King James Bible and, and preach the word of God and have soul winning and run old raggedy buses to pick up little poor kids. And now all they do is cater to the elite. People have money. Buses are gone. And kids are who knows where. There's thousands of church buildings in this country with for sale sign on. I'm doing that's what sin will do to a church. So when we get up here and we preach against sin, don't don't be weary. Don't say, oh my goodness. Listen, you sin, it's like starting a fire. You want to put a fire out, right? If somebody sets something on fire, you'd want me to go over here and put it out like that. That's what sin will do to a church. It'll destroy it. And then look what sin will do individuals at first a man is startled by sin then he's pleasing then it's easy then it's delightful then it's frequent then it's habitual then it's confirmed it'll take you to hell for all eternity I've heard about Great men, supposedly great men in the eyes of the world. Here's what the world will never tell you, how these men died. You know what Voltaire, the famous atheist, said before he died, as he was dying? I am abandoned by God and man. He said, I'd give anything in the world in six months to live. H.G. Wells said, I have no peace. George Bernard Shaw said, why do I want to go on living? 
I read about people's last words, and there's thousands of these. I've given you them before, but uh, Marvin Gaye, you know, the, the singer back in the 70s or whenever it was, I'm sure you all have heard of Marvin Gaye. He, he said, oh, last thing he ever said, I think his daddy shot him. Daddy hates me, and I'm never coming back. You see, known all over the country, rich, popular, and in that home, daddy hates me. I ain't never coming back. He didn't. They said Michael Jackson, I can't confirm this, but the reports were that the last word Michael Jackson ever said was more milk. More milk. And that was the terminology for the medicine that, he, that eventually killed him. More milk. All that money, all that fame, all that, you know what? You know what killed Michael Jackson? Sin did. Raised Jehovah Witness, and wound up whatever he was, it was. And God have mercy. I hope and pray he may have got saved, but it don't look good in his situation. Heath Ledger, that famous actor, y'all know, played in a perverted movie uh, about the, uh, the cowboy movie. Uh, he said, you know what he said? Last thing he died, said before he died, I'll be fine. I just need some sleep. He found out sin ain't, gonna, ain't, ain't nothing to mess with. You know what Frank, Frank Sinatra said right before he died? I'm losing it. You know what Joan Crawford, the famous actress at Hollywood, said the last thing she ever said? She said, blanket, don't ask God to help me. You know what Steve Jobs said? The last thing he said before he died? Oh. You know what James Dean said? You know, you see the famous James Dean was only like 20-something years old and, and he's an icon and to this day people say, oh man, James Dean was cool. James Dean. You know what the last thing James Dean said was? He said, that guy's going to stop. He's got to see us. Yeah, I didn't see him. Hit him head on. You know what Edgar Allan Poe said? Lord, help my poor soul. What about this woman? who uh, was going up the road, her and her, her and her kid, and it was late one evening, they was going up this old country road, and she saw something in the road, and she thought it was a deer uh, that had been hit because it was moving, and she stopped and saw it was a person. So she got out of her car and took the little kid by the hand and walked up, and it was a, a young boy, a teenage boy. And this teenage boy was laying there so drunk, he couldn't stand up. And she said, son, are you all right? And he said, don't, don't, let, don't tell my daddy. She said, son, can I help you? Are you all right? He said, don't tell my daddy. That boy's daddy was a good Christian man. Boy had been raised in church all his life. And he was out drinking and staggered and fell. And he said, she said, well, Son, I'm going to try to help you. And she started to help him to get up. There was a car come flying around the road, and set down around the curve, and come flying up there. And she didn't have no choice. She had to grab her child and back out of the way. And so that car come over him, and the muffler and the and, and got that car caught that boy and drug him up the road, probably 50 or 75 feet. He never even knew what hit him. Never even knew what hit him. You know what he found out? Sin will destruct you. It will destroy you. It will destroy you. Now, you can sit there all morning and say, Brother Danny, you're a little old. I've got my, my little sin. I pet it a little bit. Yeah, and it's destroying you. Little Cancer starts out like that. Everything, little bitty, little bitty, and it grows into something you can't handle. I've got a warning for somebody here this morning. Don't play with sin. One of the saddest stories of our of our of this last twenty years is that nightclub fire up there and up north or the pyrotech stuff went off the White Snake concert, February twentieth, two thousand three. And I, I saw a little somebody that had a video on their phone or something. Man, them people, that guy's up there and they were they were performing on stage and they had these fireworks. It looked like sparklers going shooting out fireworks on it. People was going wild and they were all flashing the devil horns like this and people, one girl's holding up a beer bottle and they, I mean, they were all having a time. 
And all of a sudden, a little some of that got on the curtain and had that foam around that building that's supposed to help with the acoustics and stuff, and it was really pretty flammable. Didn't even have a sprinkler system in that nightclub that night, or a legal one. And it caught fire. And at first people said, cool, man, this is, whoa, what are they doing? And everybody was laughing and everything. And all of a sudden it, they realized it'd be like, it, it'd be like this room right here and no door there and no door there and twice this many people. And all of a sudden it hit them. This place could burn. And they said within less than two minutes that whole stage was on fire. And I, I watched that video, you could hear people screaming. And it was all running for that one door. Well, obviously, we're pushing, pushing. If everybody in here was trying to get out that one door, somebody going to get run over, and then somebody else going to get run over. They said there was people stacked that high, and people trying to climb over them and screaming and cussing and fighting. And, you know, I forgot, um, so many, a hundred and so many people burned to death that night. And 200 more was injured. You know what? They forgot about something. They forgot about what God said about sin. You see this right here? That's Bible. I'm not telling you my opinion or my thoughts. This is the Bible. This is God's word. God's warning you, don't be a fool. If you're here this morning, you've never been saved. If you've never, ever really, really been saved in your heart, I beg you, come and get saved this morning. If you're here this morning and you're playing with sin, I beg you, get it right before it gets you. Let's stand by our heads for prayer. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody's moving, please. Nobody's talking. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I want to ask you a question this morning. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Nobody's talking. Will you search your heart right now? Search your heart right now. You're here this morning and say, Preacher, I know what you're talking about. I need help from the Lord this morning. I need to get right. I know I need to get right. You, you just keep pushing it and keep pushing it. Something finally happens. And then you say, I didn't listen, I didn't listen, I didn't listen. I thought I was smart, I thought I was so cool. Something going to happen, something going to happen. Oh, you shouldn't try to scare people. I'm just warning you, something going to happen. Something's going to happen if you don't get right. You let God speak to your heart this morning. Someone here this morning say, Preacher, I need prayer, please. I want this church to pray for me. Would you let us pray for you this morning? Just slip up your hand. Take it right back down. God bless you, God bless you. Hands Hands around the building this morning. Anybody else? Right quick. Slip it up. Take it right back down. Be honest. Be honest. Say, preacher, I need prayer this morning. Please pray for me. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Amen. All right. We're going to pray, and we're going we're gonna to give an invitation. Heads are still and eyes are closed. Right now, while she plays softly, if you lifted your hand or you didn't lift your hand, you need to come. Come on right now. Come on, let's just slide out of your seat. Let's just get down here now and let's do business with God. Come on, young people, teenagers, mama, daddy, get down here this morning and say, uh, Lord, Lord, help me to turn my back on that sin. Lord, help me to stay away from that sin. Lord, I'm, I'm going to get rid of it. As soon as service is over, I'll erase that junk off my phone. I'll, I'll throw them videos away, or that music, or that, that drug, or that uh, wh whatever it is, God, is going out of my house. When I get home, by the grace of God, I'm getting rid of it this morning. Amen. Or that, maybe it's in your heart. Maybe that sin's in your heart, that sin of rebellion, that sin of, uh, you know, of lust, uh, that sin of uh, thrills of the flesh. And, and you don't want to let go of it. It's too sweet. It, you like it. It's like candy. Let me tell you what it's going to do. It's going to bite you. It's going to bite you. Just like that hook in that bait. It's going to bite you. 
Lord God, help us this morning. Help these that raise their hand. Help these in the altar this morning. Oh God, I pray that you'd meet the need of every single heart here today. Do what ought to be done in every life. Father, I thank you, Lord, for our time together. I thank you, Lord, for the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. I pray for these on the altar this morning that you'd help every one of them. Lord, help them to live for you. Help them to serve you. Oh God, Lord Jesus, help us, Father, we pray. We love you this morning, God. Fill this place with power. Fill this place with the Holy Ghost. God, save souls and do a great work as we get kick into youth rally mode here in the next few days oh God do a miracle in every heart we pray we'll thank you for it while these are praying this morning we'll wait just a few seconds maybe here this morning you've never been saved be a good time to come amen be a good time to come hallelujah praise the Lord thank God for these amen amen